Hey. Hello. How are you? Drinking. Look upon my work and despair. Yeah. The legacy. Pistol. Freaking disgraceful. Ah, oh, man. I'm done. I'm done. I'm not. I'm. I'm not reviewing serious tort. In. I'm not reviewing the next episode. I am done with Doctor Who. Com. Doctor Who died last Sunday, and it doesn't please me to tell you that. Unfortunately, the BBC is unaware of this because it's never been better editorially. But usually, the repurposers who are in charge of these properties of late are the last to know that their product has completely turned off a large portion of the fan base. And the BBC has done the impossible. They have reunited a large portion of the Whovians. Now, of course, there are still some of the Jody bots out there who love this version of Doctor Who. There are still some who will defend it. There's the company line out there that this doesn't hurt Doctor Who. It just adds more stories. It gives us more possibilities possibilities that were always there. That's why it was called Doctor Who. That's why he was always ambiguous. Now he officially has an origin story and now he is permanently a she. It's no longer Doctor Who. You can argue it's either Doctor How or Doctor Why, but we know the why. The BBC chose to hyper-focus on the first episode from series 11, which had over 10 million viewers. Then it consistently dropped throughout the season and continued to drop throughout season 12. The last episode, The Timeless Children, should have been the highest rated Doctor Who episode ever. Making that kind of a change to the Doctor, especially when it was that predictable, you think you would have over 10 million people watching an origin story. And the results have just come in this morning while I was recording this video, and it is now official. It had 3.78 million overnight viewers and a consolidated number of 4.69, which makes this the fifth lowest rated series in Doctor Who history. Well done, Chibi. And that's not all. It's the lowest rated series since Doctor Who returned in 2005. And it gets even worse. A lot of the Jody bots are trumpeting that HBO Max has saved this series and has helped it get commissioned for at least two or three more but sometimes plans change. Look at those U.S. ratings. They lost 150,000 viewers from the penultimate episode to the finale, showing people knew what was going to happen here in the States, and they checked out. Jeez. Don't be ridiculous, Franklin. I've read the files. The doctor is a man. I've had an upgrade. <laughs> But the BBC decided to take the ratings figures from that one single episode and run with it and do whatever they wanted and get political and as partisan as they wanted. They still deny it to this very day and we will get into one of those responses. But they didn't listen to their fandom. A lot of us were saying this prior to season 11. A lot of us were saying this during season 11. A lot of us have been saying it this year. They undid 56 years plus full of canon, mythos, and history, disgracing the spirit of William Hartnell because they could and because they had to. I've mentioned this before, but it bears repeating. It wasn't just enough to bring in the first female doctor played by Jodie Whittaker. They had to redo the history because the BBC recognized that that was inherently a sexist move. It wasn't true feminism. How can you have a strong, independent, powerful woman when it was built on years of male-established canon? Well, that's easy. We'll just go back in time, de-age the doctor, fix it in a voiceover montage. There you go. The doctor's a girl. 
You're killing it before our very eyes! The whole... Ah! No! <laughs> and, but if anybody has any question about how Chibnall or Jodie Whittaker or the people at the BBC feel about previous Doctor Who, I'll let Jodie explain it in her own words. There's absolutely no point being in a show that has a divide in any way. But you did tackle that problem head on, and I have to admire your out-of-the-box thinking. Let's alienate more and of the I fans. What The only thing that makes great stories are stories that people can relate to and they feel represented within. I'm not going to argue with that, but the first aspect of relatability is on the base human level, and that's something the BBC, Chibnall, and a lot of the modern writing can't do very well human and i think that 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 is the world that we live in and to to only see tv shows or films from one very specific demographic is it's got old <laughs> yeah <laughs> i don't want to come down too hard on jody whittaker because she is no different than any of the other empty-headed professional pretenders that come out of the bbc and hollywood she is simply just telling the access media what she thinks they want to hear she has no idea what she's talking about because remember she didn't watch doctor who so how would she know if the story got old or not well, I'm here to tell you, Jody, to be old, you need to get old. And Doctor Who got old because it must have related to somebody on the human level to last as long as it did. But thanks to you, it no longer does that. And now it won't last much longer. Now, I predict they'll be pulling out all the stops for season 13. And we already hear that they might be splitting the series. Imagine that the next season of Doctor Who was going to be split up over two time frames. For example, the first five episodes would air in January and the last five episodes in May. How does this impact your interest in watching the next season of Doctor Who? I personally don't give a shit. Makes me less interested in watching? Makes me more interested in watching? Has no impact on my viewing interest. I'm guessing the latter will be the popular opinion. Captain Jack will be coming back next season and probably River Song and Matt Smith as the 11th Doctor and probably even David Tennant. And guess what? It won't matter. How do you identify the Doctors now? It used to be that the first Doctor was William Hartnell. William Hartnell is no longer the first Doctor. It's terrible. The whole idea of the Doctor being pre Hartnell sucks. The whole idea of the Doctor founding Time Lord Society sucks because it takes away a lot of the mystery of the character. And I've even seen adamant defenders of series 12 and 11 come out and say, yeah, this was bad. William Hartnell will always be the first Doctor and there's nothing Chibi can do to take that away from the fandom. They can stop watching, they have stopped watching, but I know the Jody bots, they're out there saying, oh, but HBO Max has saved us. Remember, plans change. Prior to Game of Thrones season eight, Dan and Dave had a Star Wars trilogy and there was gonna be five Game of Thrones prequels. All of those prequels have been canceled. Now they've redone another one, but they weren't from the original. And Dan and Dave are no longer doing a Star Wars trilogy. Now remember that this deal with HBO Max was done prior to season 12. What made the Doctor Who IP valuable was the classic era and the Tenet and Smith era. And you've just made that pointless. In your pretentious, fart-smelling ways, BBC, you just destroyed the reason your IP is so valuable. The series since Series 11 has been tanking. People have been complaining for very good reason about the quality of this show. And instead of, you know, having a lighter touch on things, instead of um, trying to make it better, they doubled the fuck down and tried to they cement themselves and, and all the stuff that we disliked about this direction and trying to and they tried to ingrain it not only into the you know these few seasons but what they did is they retroactively tried to ingrain it into the into the very very essence of the show of the character and the past and it's just of like trying to flip everything on its head and that is freaking disgraceful Ugh, man. Doctor Who is a beloved long-running series, and we understand that some people will feel attached to a particular idea they have of the Doctor, or that they enjoy certain aspects of the program more than others. 
That's not pretentious, is it? Opinions are strong, and this is indicative of the imaginative hold that Doctor Who has or had that so many people engage with it on so many different levels. The continual input of fresh ideas and new voices across the cast and the writing and production teams has been key to the longevity of the series. Had been key. That said, we appreciate that it's impossible to please all of the racist and sexist viewers all of the time. But it's important to note that the program storylines are never reflective of the political views of the writers. Bullshit! Like sewage, and smartphones, and Donald Trump, some things are just inevitable. Since its inception, Doctor Who has always tackled environmental and social issues alongside exciting sci-fi action and adventure. <laughs> Top of his head. <laughs> Look at his lips. <laughs> we feel the current series continues to strike the balance across its episodes, and the storytelling continues to resonate and engage the family audience. Kind regards. Go fuck yourself. The BBC. Oh, <laughs> fuck the film top. Chris Chibnall. He's fucking done it. It's, he did it! He, he, uh, he did exactly what we feared! I'm done. He's a prick. I'm sorry. We wholeheartedly support the creative freedom of our writers and feel that creating an origin story is a staple of science fiction writing. What was written does not alter the flow of stories from William Hartnell's brilliant Doctor onwards. It just adds new layers and possibilities to this ongoing saga. That is what's called the company line, and that is what I have been seeing a lot on Twitter, and that is a lie. We also have received many positive reactions to this episode's cliffhanger, and I'm sure you're choosing to focus on that. But again, I want to remind you that any fans of the Timeless Children, anybody who is okay with Tom Baker not being the fourth doctor anymore, is the vocal minority. What he has done tonight has not just ruined William Hartnell's legacy. He has destroyed every single other doctor's legacy out there. He is an asshole. There are still a lot of questions to be answered, and we hope that you will come back to join us and see what happens. We're not. But we appreciate that it's impossible to please all of our sexist and racist viewers all the time, and your feedback has been raised with the program's executive producer, and he has promptly shit-canned it. This is the second time this year the BBC has had to respond to complaints. Look upon my work and despair. Remember when I said that party line? Well, we have the Radio Times. Doctor Who Series 12 review a big step up. Four out of five stars. In the finale itself, I didn't have the same issues as many did with the Timeless Children's big canon rewrite. If anything, I think it adds some more mystery to the series. I would like to thank the hundreds of people who emailed me their BBC complaints and responses. I will be reading those later today on a live stream. If you're watching this video in the future, it will be linked in the description. I will no longer be helping Doctor Who in any way, shape, or form. I will no longer be purchasing Big Finish, Big Chief, Blu-rays, DVDs, toys, 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 toys. If I buy anything, it will be secondhand on eBay. I will no longer be using the hashtag Doctor Who because that does help the show. I will be using Hashtag RIP Doctor Who. As I have done with many of my Doctor Who videos this year, we will end it with some Rotten Tomatoes audience reviews and the latest ones to a little Chopin. Adam G, one star, the oldest question in the universe, the one that must never ever be answered. Oh, no, wait, never mind. This season is a dumpster fire. JS, half star, with lazy plots, terrible structure, and meaningless bait thrown throughout Doctor Who Series 12 is an insult to the 50 plus years of storytelling that came before it. Indeed. It's even an insult to the bad bits because it's that much worse. Ragnar H, one and a half stars. There were good concepts and performances, but the execution otherwise left much to be desired. The end problem of the season boils down to someone reverse engineering K9, the regenerating robot dog. You know they're out of ideas. Then it'll probably turn out that the doctor used to be the master, but forgot. 
Andrew M, half star. You've got to be kidding. Destroyed. Brandon L, one and a half stars, retconning decades of lore, plot holes bigger than the TARDIS interior, and a story that never gets explained or given the development it rightfully deserves for a series finale. The only reason this doesn't get a point five stars is because I enjoyed Sasha Dewan's take on the iconic master. As did I. I thought he was pretty good. And it goes on and on. Christopher P. Half stars. Storyline goes everywhere and changes minute by minute. Not enjoyable. The main character has totally been rewritten. Better to change the name of the show or just end Doctor Who and create a new series with this writing. Shoehorning this writing into the Doctor Who space is driving viewers away. Dylan C. Half stars. This is not Doctor Who. I would not recommend watching the series after season 7. I totally agree. Maybe Maybe Peter Capaldi season eight, but not beyond that. Sarah B, half star, extreme disappointment. In August 2017, I stumbled across an episode of Doctor Who and I became so intrigued that I binge watch every episode from 2009 to catch up in time for the Christmas special. I also watched Classic Who while waiting for series 11. Sadly, season 12 and specifically episode 10 has caused me to mourn not only the loss of something I came to love and enjoy, but also the time I spent getting caught up on canon. Canon, which now is completely irrelevant. Goodbye, new old friend. Solaris C, half star. In one hour, these people managed to undo decades of lore and history. Absolutely, utterly, and abysmally awful. Just flat out awful. And the worst part is now that the lore has been utterly screwed over. All the episodes before mean jack shite. Thomas F, one and a half stars. There were decent episodes this season. I disagree, but he has a right to his opinion. But they were the exception. It simply feels like the producers and the writers don't care about Doctor Who. Lazy writing, no regard for the setting, pointless showboating. This has killed my remaining interest I had in the show. Joshua W, half star. They destroyed 50 plus years of canon for no good reason. The stories are horrible and the doctor is boring. Wishing for a new doctor, writers, Whitaker's doctor needs to be forgotten. Agar T, half star. The last two seasons of Doctor Who have been the worst that have been broadcast. Chris Chibnall has basically destroyed one of the last good programs the BBC produce. The final episode was a complete insult to the longtime fans, trying to change storylines that have been established for decades. And I want to add, flushing 50 plus years of great storytelling down the toilet, all in support of a bad idea. I don't know if Chibnall is doing this under orders from the BBC, who hates the program, but if not, then how come the BBC are accepting the dramatic fall in ratings? I think it's true that the BBC did hate the program in its previous form, and that's why it is truly dead, and I agree with your final sentiments. R.I.P. The Doctor, 1963 to 2017. NerdErotic.com, please subscribe.